Good morning. Welcome to the Clinch River Homestead. I'm John. I'm Nicole. And we're running low on meat in the freezer, so today we're going to make a butcher run. Today's episode is all about buying your meat in bulk and how to package it. So if you want to know more about that, keep watching the video. Alright, so as you know, if you watched our video before of going to the butcher shop, we made a decision to try different butcher shops in the area so that we can get a, or a taste of the different meats from the different shops. So today, we're going to head over to the Simpson Meat Market and pick up all of our meat now for the next month in bulk. And we're going to come home and package it up and show you how we do that. So, come on with us for the ride. Let's head on over to the butcher shop. It's all about meat. All right, we just got here. So let's go in and see what they got in here. We probably won't be able to film much. Okay, so we got all of our goodies. We're heading back to the truck, go back to the house, and we'll meet you there. Hey everyone, so we just got back to the house and I'm going to show you uh, what we bought in bulk. So we bought everything, you get home, you bought all this stuff, now what do you do? So we're going to help you out right now and show you what we do when we get home. So but first, before we do anything, we're going to show you what we bought. So I'm going to bring the camera down and show you what we bought. Now half of it, that butcher shop kind of already packaged a lot of it for us. A lot of the meats so but we do have a lot of other stuff that we're going to package up here and show you how we do that but first let's take a look at the uh, meats that we got okay so what you see in front of you i'm going to work from left to right i hope that comes up left to right in the video but uh so mm -hmm. over here we've got a bunch of ground meat how much is this oh so right here we've got five pounds of ground meat each of these weigh three pounds each. So that's six pounds of country bacon. We got some ribs. We got two full pork loins. Wow. Which is, I mean. Yeah. And then the guy gave us a free ground beef. And then over on this side, we wound up getting an entire uh, beef loin. And they cut it up into steaks for us. And they vac sealed everything for us. And they've, these are uh, beef cubes. We got a couple flank steaks right here. And then we got a bunch of sausage. These are hot Italian sausage. What Nicole's probably going to do right now is put away all of the package stuff because it's been out of the fridge for a little while. So she's going to put all this away. Yep. And then I'm going to show you how we package up our other meats. Right? Yep. Sounds good. Okay. So let's get going with that. Now it also helps to have a stand-up freezer or a deep freezer if you're doing this. If it were my choice, the better bet would be a stand-up freezer. They are a little bit more expensive, but here's the reason why. Half of you people watching probably know that if you've got a chest freezer at home, all the stuff in the bottom you probably haven't seen in over a year or two. So I prefer the uprights because it allows you to see your food better. It allows you to organize everything better. I'm going to show you a tool that we use to vac seal. I gave it away, our meats. And that is uh, this. This is a very inexpensive. Now we've got two different options. The second option I don't have available to show you in person. What I'm going to do is put a picture up on the screen of the other option that we have, which is a commercial vac sealer. Um, so we, we actually use both of them. It depends on what we're doing. The regular food saver vac sealer, you're only going to get about five to 10 bags before it overheats and then you got to let it sit. So the commercial one will go all day. So if you're doing a half a cow or you've got 300 pounds of meat to do, that's the one you want. First thing when you're going to start talking about vac sealing is uh, the bags. So you can either go by pre-made bags like this, 
There, I believe there are three or four mil bags. I really like the pre-made bags, and the reason is because it has a really nice uh, cutout at the top here. So, and what that does is it allows you to then open it after uh, it's been frozen, so you don't need to get a pair of scissors or anything. Um, but these bags, I, I highly recommend bags. The other way that you can go is to make your own bags in a roll. These are okay, but if you've got a lot of meat that you've got to get done, these can kind of take a long time to do. All right, so I'm gonna put the camera back down uh, on the meat and I'm gonna show you what we do and how we package and proportion our meat out. Okay, so first I'm gonna start with the ground meat. Uh, usually we'll take this and make one and a half to one pound packs with it. Uh, it all depends on what we may be using it for. So usually between one to one and a half uh, pound packs. Now I do have a scale that you can weigh these on, but I tend to not use that because I can pretty much guess the bags will only hold so much. And you don't want to fill these bags all the way up to the top, uh, which you'll see in a second. You're only going to want to fill up maybe uh, two thirds of the way up. You want to leave a third uh, open. Okay, I'm just going to get it in there, pack it in good. You don't want to leave any air bubbles in there because that's what you're trying to get out is all the air. And that's probably about a pound and a half right there. So uh, we take that, get that, put it right in our vac sealer. Hit seal. Now while that's vac sealing and sealing, always I'll go and grab another bag and start filling up. Okay. Okay, so just to show you, uh, this is what we got from the meat market last time, which was the J&M meat market. Uh, these are uh, the loin that we had cut up in the fillets, and we're going to be cooking these later today, putting them in a marinade right now, but just to go show you what the quality of the meat that we got here. Okay, so I've got this packaged up here. I'm, I'm going to put a little bit more in this bag. All right, this one over here should be done, and we've got a really good seal on it. Okay, and that's probably about a pound and a half or so. Pop our next one in, grab another bag. Now, one trick that I learned when you're packaging these up, if your meat is wet, it's got a lot of blood, uh, one of the things that does help is if you take a uh, paper towel and put it in the top of the bag, and it'll suck through that paper towel. All right, so basically what you would do is you would take a paper towel and you would just put it across the top here uh, not where it's sealing, but I'll show you. So if you have something that is pretty bloody or uh, it's got a lot of juice in it, all you got to do is get a paper towel, fold it over to fit in the bag. You can put it down close to the meat, but you do not want to have the paper towel up where it's going to be sealing. And you take that right in your chamber, hit seal. Now what's going to happen is all the juice is going to be pulled through this and then the paper towel is going to catch any of it, but it will allow the air to pass through. So that's a good trick uh, if you've got some wet meat. Because that's the other thing, if you get a lot of water, especially with a, a more inexpensive model like this, 
Um, if you get water up in this seal area, you're not going to get a really good tight seal uh, in here and that water is going to um, evaporate when it starts to boil when that seal and then you'll have air bubbles and you won't have a really good seal. So it's really important you keep this seal dry. All right, so we've got our couple packs of ground beef here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and pop these in the freezer now. And then uh, probably gonna go ahead and take these pork loin and we're gonna cut these in two. So let's go put these away, get the cutting board out here and get these cut up. All right, so I got the cutting board. We're gonna cut these pork loins in half and then this is what these make your own bags are great for because now I can put that pork loin and make this bag as big as I need it for it. So, all right, let's get this cut in half. All right, so we're gonna cut this pork loin right in half. That's two. Again, right in half. All right, so now we've got four. We're gonna package each one individually. Let's get that going here. Now, first what we need to do is make our bag. So we Seal the end of the bag first, and you could even do a double seal on it if you'd like. Um, our bigger commercial one actually does a really big seal on it. So then you want to bring this over to your meat. Remember, you want to give a good amount extra. This has a little cutter in it, so I'm going to just use that cutter. And then I'm going to make all the bags the same size because I know that bag will fit all of them. So now I'm just going to cut a bunch of bags. All right, now again, we're going to try to get uh, these all done at one time, but it may overheat on us and we may have to stop. So we'll see. Okay, so we've got all the bags already made for it. Um, they're already pre-sized now, so we're just gonna take each piece, put it in the bag, and then we will seal it up. All right, so we may have to use our paper towel trick on this because these are a little juicy, which is a good thing. Dry this out. So remember, you want the inside of these bags dry because that water will start to bubble and evaporate and boil once that seal comes down. So I'm going to leave the size of the bag. I'm not going to cut it anymore. We're going to do our paper towel trick on the inside. And that should catch all of it. Yep, and if you can, I don't know if you can see that, but that paper towel is now wet. So it's soaked up all of the uh, moisture that was in that bag. Now on this, I'm going to do a double seal on the top just in case there was any moisture that got stuck in that. All right, so I did a triple seal on this just to make sure because they're wet and when they get moist, it doesn't seal as well. All right, get our second one out. Mm. Okay. The other thing that you might consider doing is exactly this and patting them down. So before you put any of that meat in the bag, Pat it down first. Let me pick that up. Pat it down, get all of the uh, liquid off of it. 
makes it much easier when you go to put it in your bag. Uh, it doesn't deposit all the water on the bag or juice liquid. All right. Now it's still, even though we wiped it off, I'm going to use a paper towel on the inside uh, and this way it will suck up any juice still left. Put that right in there. Back sealer. All right, and I don't know if you can notice in this one, but there was a lot less uh, liquid absorbed by the paper towel because we got most of it off before we even put it in the bag. So I'm going to do another seal on it just to uh, be safe. Okay, so the infamous blinking light. So now we've used this vac sealer too much. It's already overheated. So now we've got to wait for it to cool down. In the meantime, while we're waiting on that to cool down, we're going to package up some bacon right now. So let's get some bacon in here. Actually, take this away. All right, we're going to try to put the bacon in here. Try to get about a pound of bacon in that. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can fold it up however you got to do to get it. Whatever you got to do to get it in. All right, the last tenderloin's getting uh, vac sealed right now and go back in the freezer. And then we've got all these sausages here to package up. So we usually like to package up our sausages uh, four per pack. Uh, seems pretty good for us. If you got a family of five or more, then okay? you may want to put more in a pack, but that's what we do. Uh, yeah. All right, so there we go. Here's uh, going to be one pound pack, one pound pack of bacon, and this is the country bacon. So it's cured bacon. We've got six pounds of this to package up. We go through a lot of bacon every week, so, and $5.99 a pound. Great. All right, we have our last pork loin packaged. We're going to go ahead and put that in the freezer. All right, so Nicole's going to go ahead and take those loins downstairs. And in the meantime, I'm going to get these packaged up in our bags. So let's go and do that. Now with sausage, you, you really like to get them in there as straight as possible so they're not curved um, because of the casings. Okay, so there we go. We got a pack of four sausages. Go ahead and vac seal those. And I believe we got one more pack. I want to give you a little tip when it comes to vac sealing steaks and when it comes to vac sealing anything like this. A really good tip would be to freeze it first in your freezer and then after it's frozen after that night, take it out of your freezer, put it in and then vac seal it. This way you won't have any liquids and you're not going to squeeze any of the liquids out of your meat. Quick tip. But what I do is I will stand over this while they're vac sealing and, and uh, manually put it in the seal mode so it doesn't smash them uh, too much. So it's another tip. Okay. 
All right, they're all packaged up. That's our last pack. So let's go ahead and vac seal those down. I like to get all the bags ready. All right, and there you go. There's a packaged up sausage, uh, the hot Italian sausage, uh, four per pack. And there you go. All right, let's start doing the bacon. So these are one pound packs of bacon. Let's go ahead and get these going. And we're it's probably going to overheat again, so we're going to have to wait. And if I do get anything on the inside of the bag, it's always a good idea to wipe it off. Again, you want to make sure that's free and clean. All right, so there we go. There's a pack of our one pound of bacon, country bacon packaged up, ready to go in the freezer. All right, and it's overheated. So let's get the packaging up more. All right, so that one's done. We just got this one here to do this one. So that was three pounds from that one pack. And we've got three more to do right here. And boy, this bacon smells delicious. Amazing. Three pounds of bacon packed, ready for the freezer. So this is why chest freezers or upright freezers are pretty handy, because we're going to take you over to the freezer and I'm going to show you why uh, you need one. So once you get all this meat packed up, and we've taken some of this downstairs already and put it in another freezer, um, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Last pack. And we're overheated again. So you let that cool down. So while we're waiting on this uh, thing to cool down again, so if you've seen it, we've had to stop three times already, I believe. Three, maybe four times. You can count them in the video. Um, how many times we had to stop for this thing to cool down. And that's a lot of time wasted. Let's see if this has cooled down enough. Oh, and one thing Nicole wanted me to tell you is the reason why we don't have our commercial vac sealer is because it's somewhere down in the garage and all of those totes that you've probably already seen in all of our other videos. So back to the meat. All right, so this is our last pack that we've got here. We're gonna vac seal it up. And then once I get this vac sealed, I'm gonna take you over to the freezer and you're gonna see everything that's in that freezer. And you'll understand what I'm talking about, why you need a chest freezer or an upright freezer or something other than your traditional fridge freezer combo. All right, that's our third and, well, third and final pound of bacon from this pack, six pounds total. So I'm gonna take this over to the freezer and I'm gonna bring you guys along with us. So come on. So we're just flipping you around here. Now you can see what we got here. So a lot of this down here is uh, pork. And then we have our meat. We've got Angus meat in the background. And then we've got more pork at the top. Not to mention the four big pork loins that we've already taken downstairs. So 
we, we packaged up a lot of meat today. Luckily, the butcher shop already packaged up half of it for us. But let me tell you something, we paid for that. All right, so I think we're going to wrap up the video today. I hope we were able to give some great pointers. I hope you're able to take some good information away from what we showed today. Um, if you have any questions, drop a comment down below. We really look forward to seeing comments, and we will respond ASAP if you have any questions. So it would really help out the channel if you smash that thumbs up button, click subscribe, and if you'd like to get notified on future videos, tick that little bell. Thanks for watching the Clinch River Homestead. We will see you on the next one.